Hey everyone, it's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com, and today's video, I'm going to talk more about this whole troll and toad, no longer getting involved in buying Magic the Gathering cards, selling Magic the Gathering cards, and um, I heard some other vendors obviously changing the way they do buy lists. Uh, I think some vendors aren't even paying cash anymore for uh, actual Magic cards. Um, they're actually just going to do trade. So let's talk about the current environment and my opinions on this. So... This is getting a lot of, lot of big news uh, in the media in general for Magic World because of the fact that Troll and Toad has been a, well, a pretty much a juggernaut throughout the years uh, in the LGS community store. Uh, they're based out of uh, Kentucky, um, and they have a pretty large online presence uh, overall. But I will say, over the years, with different kind of management, different kind of direction, the store, the Troll and Told brand has evolved and changed over the years. And I will say it has become probably more non-Magic focused, uh, primarily because, as you guys can see, Magic the Gathering popularity and products have gone down over the years. And this actually has caused uh, kind of the bigger problem is, the bigger problem you're concerned is, are there going to be other LGS stores and other big box uh, you know, bigger uh, LGS stores are going to fail and change the way they deal with magic. And I have to say yes, because one thing you have to understand, a lot of these larger stores have to have a, a large percentage of profit um, for these items. And if Magic the Gathering is not profitable per the CEO of uh, Troll and Toad, then it's not going to be something they're going to uh, except for the long term, and as you can see, the decision is pretty much final. So, I think there's going to be some liquidation of some of their products, uh, stuff like that. Now, who's to say they may come back to Magic in the future? But for the near, uh, you know, for the future, you know, in the near future, uh, I don't see it coming back for a while. Uh, there's too much products happening for Magic: The Gathering, as you guys know. There's too much new products happening, and the profit levels are very low. Um, it used to be back in the day, people buy the products and there's value into the boxes. The boxes would have, you know, you could uh, have a certain EV expected value where if you could crack the box, you could sell the singles and make a decent profit and kind of, you know, s you know, sell uh, pre-orders, etc. Have tournaments at the store. Uh, you know, there was popularity in the lore and uh, the whole thing. But now it's so saturated. There's so much wallet fatigue in the community, the store Troll and Toad had to react. Now, talking about, this is freaking fly here, just have to, have to kill it. Um, there is an issue also with buying singles. So, think about it this way. If you're a, a store, you're buying off a certain margin percentage, and then you go off and buy singles of the newer product, especially newer product. And then what happens is the demand declines, and then the single values decline also. You have a perfect storm of, well, I'm stuck with shit, and it's just going to be like toilet paper inside the, in the bathroom. And that's exactly what magic has become, the, the newer stuff. The products are crap in terms of value. They go down so fast. The demand is so low. The singles, you know, you can't buy the singles because they're going to tank anyway. So there's a huge mass exodus in the marketplace. So where does this go for like other LGS stores? Because I think like Star City Games started doing like only, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, for newer stuff, especially uh, only uh, store credit. I think other stores will probably go that way. How do these smaller LGS stores even survive? And also, how do the backpack dealers uh, online dealers like myself survive. Now, I am not uh, selling newer Magic product, but I will say if you are a smaller LGS store, you're most likely going to fail in the next few years. Um, or you're going to have to change your business and change the model so it's not focused on Magic at all. See, the problem is the environment for Magic is so digitalized. There's so much Magic Arena stuff out there uh, uh, there's the big box company Amazon obviously is involved 
other collabs with other companies. Wizards has diversified their product line to license magic and to monetize. So therefore, LGS stores, the old ways of us walking into stores, playing magic, learning the game, loving it, collecting, uh, going there and buying packs and singles, the, 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 the whole thing has changed. You can buy from anywhere around the world now, get you know prices very competitive. Your LGS store, while it sounds uh, awesome in theory to support an LGS, which I still think is a great way to go, Unfortunately, um, price dictates a lot of it. Another thing is LGS stores doesn't really necessarily carry the whole range of everything you need. One of the things that I noticed is that like a, a big store like Card Kingdom, they can make your commander decks, and uh, I was told they can create your decks and such uh, all there at once, and they ship it all to you uh, directly, uh, not separating a bunch of cards. So they have the, the inventory and obviously the tools to help you with that. Uh, TCG Player obviously is so big now, um, and they're very relevant in the whole scenario that LGS stores have to revert to have being on TCG Player and also eBay to compete because the LGS store just doesn't actually, the physical store doesn't produce enough actual traffic anymore. So ask, you, ask the question why would a store even be an LGS store? Why would you pay the payroll, the HR? The, uh, the, the, you know, the, the storefront, all the supplies, risk of theft, security. All these factors are in play, and why would anybody do it? So that is a major reason why there's going to be a ma massive exodus. That's already happened anyway. There will be more and more over the years. Um, in the end, I do think that people, there will be stores available. There will be a lot less. Now, I will say that there are some stores with low overhead. They've got some really good deals with their certain locales. Certain stores also are in certain countries uh, are you know pretty popular. Um, and overall, they have a a sense of like a, a smaller like niche area that they deal with. So, um, for example, I went to Singapore. And that great ogre store that Ben owns was awesome. Uh, you know, great location, uh, great environment. Um, you know, obviously, you know, he may go through some tough times, but all in all, his area that he is in and his popularity and also it's a foreign country, it's not as saturated. Now, there are other stores, but he's developed himself, he's separated himself from uh, other stores providing great service and uh, products and events and stuff like that. So I think like, you know, stores that have high saturation of stores, you're going to see a lot of decline. And of course, high overhead. I think stores that have high overhead, high uh, cost of living, uh, hard to get labor, etc. This is going to be a change. And of course, as time goes on, everybody, as we get older, like myself, you're going to have changes in people's lives who no longer want to do the grind who want to open up a shop and you know be at a store do you want to be there at 60 plus years old selling magic cards now sounds great in theory you're going to have a, a manager or something or hire you know maybe your kids etc but most likely the lot you know the odds are against you to pull that off now online stores like myself for example i have a dilemma Right, I mean, I'm low overhead, no physical location. I travel the world. Uh, Main, it's really just a website, right? My eBay store runs. Uh, you know, they charge us fees when we sell items. Uh, but all in all, you know, my major costs are just pretty much travel, entertainment, hotels, stuff like that. You know, um, it's kind of like, what do I do? And over the years, you know, my kids probably are not going to get involved in magic. I'm probably going to put the assets, you know, treat them as kind of like stocks or a piece of real estate. Uh, I'm going to sell them over time, maximize when I can by grading, and obviously, you know, continue doing some of the videos I like, meeting clients, and selling uh, chunks of collect my collection and investment over the years, uh, you know, to pass it on to other generations. Now, I will say, I do believe strongly that older magic cards, only older 
have a long-term historical value that if you pass it along to your family, they, they will have cr crazy rewards long-term. Uh, I also think this way with Pokemon vintage boxes too, in general. But the problem is, why would anybody in our generation think this far, millennial generation especially, and want to pass it to the kids? This is like kind of like the old timer, uh, you know, baby boomer effect. You're thinking about legacy. I don't know. Like our generation, millennial generation, X, Y, Z, I don't know what gener Z, Gen Z, whatever. They're all about moments, memories now, not the future. So where will these collectibles go? Another great conversation, another time. But I see this widespread issue with Troll and Toad, and people think, well, is this a systemic problem? In the end of it all, I think it's the beginning of a change, a beginning of a change of an era of LGS stores, online stores, um, the ones that are leaner, the ones that are more profitable. Uh, buying collections are going to get, the margins are going to be much different. Um, the ranges are going to, people are going to be buying them for even cheaper now. Um, and as soon as that starts happening, um, you're going to see a massive change in the way people sell their collections. They might actually sell it to uh, sell it themselves because they can't get cash from the stores uh, that, like they're used to, the credit, because the value of the products is just ne next and worthless. If Wizards, well, they will continue reprinting the cards. All right, guys, put in your comments below. I want to hear your thoughts on this issue. Uh, I thought it was quite an article. I put the article link on the bottom so you guys can read more about it, what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, happy investing, but be careful. The new stuff, I would stay away. Take care.